Hey, what's up guys, Theo here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to create a synchronous every monad uh, in JavaScript. And basically the idea behind this is a lot of times you have all these conditions, right? Say you wanna check a query string, right? And you have, you know, you're gonna say if window.location.search, you know, and window.location.search.split, right? So you want to split on the query string, and then you wanna make sure there's two parts, whatever, right? And then you're gonna do your logic inside of here if it meets this condition, right? Um, it just gets kind of, you know, tiresome really to sort of make sure you're checking on everything and uh, really understand it. And then also doing the else, right? And then working with else if, you know, not, not saying that it's like super hard or anything. It's not, it's common, you know, in any programming language. But all I'm saying is that eventually it gets to the point where, um, uh, you know, you just, you have all these conditions bundled and it's, it, it, it's not really intuitive anymore. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to build out a every monad, which is going to handle this for us. So I'm going to create this every monad, right? And uh, what it's going to have, it's going to have, it's going to allow its values to be updated. I'm gonna say this dot values equals values, and we're gonna set the error to null initially. So um, basically, this is how it'll work. On its prototype, every dot prototype dot um, of. So basically, it's just a container that's gonna create a new every um, if the value is not null, right? So what we're gonna do, it's actually gonna take in a list, right? So it's gonna take an args, and we're gonna this is a splat, so it's gonna take the arguments and uh, do an array dot from, put them inside of an array, even if it's one. Now what I want to do is I want to say if args dot every, and this is a native uh, JavaScript method on the array type, I'm going to say if args dot every, and I'm just going to pass this boolean, and basically this is just going to go through and make sure that every value in this array is true. Uh, and I'm just going to say is true. Else, let me make sure, let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, so, cool. So anyway, so uh, so if args.every boolean is equal to true, uh, what do we wanna do? We actually wanna go ahead and uh, create a new every um, with the args, right? And then we wanna go ahead and uh, we can return this, but we don't actually need to here because this is of the every type here. So it's going to return a new every with the arguments. Otherwise, if it's not true, um, then we want to go ahead and uh, we're just going to go ahead and set the air property. This dot air to there is an air. And then we can also go ahead and um, we can just go ahead and return this at this point. And now values is, is just gonna be, is, is going to be empty or it just will be undefined, right? Um, so that's the of. Now we got to, now we have to work on the dot then, right? And this is a common function that you'll see when you're resolving a promise and you pass this a function and this will run when your promise is resolved. So every dot prototype dot then is a function which we pass it a function, right? And uh, what we can do here is what we're going to do is we're going to say if uh, if there is an error, right? We don't want it to run if there's an error. If this dot error is not equal to null, or if it is equal to null, uh, then let's go ahead and let's call the function, and then let's just go ahead and return this, right? So this is going to allow us to call it and still pass on to that catch, even if the catch isn't run. Else, uh, if there is an error, right, uh, we're just going to return this. And finally, let's build out our every.prototype.catch. And same sort of deal, right? And then what I can actually do here is pass this.values. Um, so right, every.prototype.catch, same thing, takes in a function. And we can say if this dot error um, is not equal to null, 
So what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and run the function or we're going to pass this dot error and then we can go ahead and return this as well. It doesn't matter. So this is going to be the last one. And if there is, um, the error is null, we'll just return this, right? So that's our, that's our every implementation. And just because I'm not using a6 class, I'm going to say var uh, example every equals, I'm just going to say every is a new every. Okay. And what I can do here is I can say um, every dot of, and I'm going to pass it one, two, three. Dot then I'm going to pass it a function that's going to have my response on here, right? And this kind of looks a lot like um, you know asynchronous code that you would see from a HTTP request, and I just like this idea of this Fluent API because it gets rid of all the if else checks once you implement this one time. And then we're going to say dot catch function error, right? And what we can actually do is log out the error and log out the response. So with all of that, let's make sure this works. So here it is, one, two, three, that's our response. Response, and then we can say error, one, two, three, right? So it's not actually running our catch function, you can see, because there's no null values, but if we were to put in a null right here, error, there is an error. And uh, maybe if we want to um, sort of determine the error, right, uh, we can say uh, what we can do is actually go ahead and uh, what we can do, we can say var error equals, what we can do, we can just, we'll just return um, this dot error equals args dot map bool, oh sorry, boolean, error, and then true, true, false, false. So we can actually look at which one is wrong, right? So maybe we want to do this, like we can say return, and we actually just want to return um, args.map, arg, arg, and uh, boolean of arg, something like that, error, object, 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 we can say error object object, right? So this is, let me take this out actually. Error, and then you can sort of see that the it's the R right there, but actually let me do, 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 do what are we passing? Passing an array, that's the problem. Um, we can just say, let's go back up. Orcs.map, return. Or, Boolean of arg. Uh, we'll just do args.filter arg. Um, let me take this out. Args.filter boolean. Not boolean. Boolean. Uh, args.filter arg. Look false. Oh, R, where R is equal to false. R, where R is equal to null. Okay, cool. So now we have one R and we're just seeing which one is it, right? And, you know, you could do a little bit more like that. It doesn't really matter. It's however you want to handle the the null, right? And then we can get the non-null. Um, so, yeah, guys, just wanted to show you that implementation, right? And then I don't think we would want to you know, keep chaining here. I guess we could catch function error. I guess we could log out the error one more time, you know. Error two, error. Right, and then this just gives us this really nice Fluent API that um, we can keep chaining on, right? We can return this and then Function, return this, and uh, dot catch, return error.
Dot catch function. If the stop error is a runoff function, return this. This dot error dot catch function. Catch error stop of error. Cool. So yeah, guys, that's about it. Um, and again, you wouldn't need a second catch. We could build that out later. I'm not going to do that right now. But um, just wanted to show you guys that Fluent API right here. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. So take care and have a great day. Thanks.